What's up creators? So today we're going to be doing a little bit of cleanup and then we're going to implement a Google sign-in function. So here we have two tasks. One's the cleanup. And instead of returning a boolean function like we were doing before, we want to return a string. We want to show a snack bar with the exception problem. And we want we don't need to check for auth result equals null because if it is null, an exception would be given off and well, we don't. We just don't need to check for null. And then in the big part, we're going to be enabling Google login. So let's quickly get the easy stuff out of the way, and then we'll do the actual Google login since that's a bigger thing. So first, I want to change it to login with email. So we're going to be doing Google login. If we make that login with email, it's pretty straightforward. Login user with email. All right. And then next we want to return string here. And here we also want to return a string. And I'll fast forward through the rest because it's pretty straightforward. All right, so now when we go into the function, we'll return an error if nothing really happens, and then success if we are able to create a user, and return the problem if we're not able to create a user. Then same thing here. So now we need to update our sign-in form. We can no longer have just this Boolean return. We want to save it to a string. We'll just name it return string. We'll have that equal to the return from there. If the return string is success, we will pop it. So we'll go back to the login screen. Otherwise, we will create a snack bar. That displays your return string for two seconds. So if it's not successful, you'll get the, what the problem is from Google and we'll return that. Then we want to do a very similar thing at the login form. Here we'll take this login function. We'll have it set it to return string. If that return string is successful, success two s's we want to push it to the home screen otherwise if it's not successful we want to print the same thing as we did before not just incorrect login info because that's pretty vague ah, not that there we go so now this should be a lot more clear we can start up and check it out all right so now we can test it out let's try to log in Creator bro mail at gmail and password. Let's just do one, two, three. Login. There we go. Password is invalid or the user does not have the password. Now, if we do a correct one, we should be able to still log in. Very nice. All right, so the cleanup is done. Now we can move on to signing in with Google. All right, so for the Google sign-in, we first need the Google logo. We'll add it in our assets folder. This is what it looks like. For the design of the Google button, I'm going to be using a button made by someone, some random person found in a Medium article. I'll link his Medium article in the description if you want to check it out. I need to add the Google sign-in plugin. Package, not plugin. I guess plugin, I don't know. And then we should be almost good to go. So we can launch the app again. Actually, before that. So then the next step is we need to add SHA-1 authentication. So we need to add a sign-in method of Google. We need to enable that. Add a supporting email, this email. Save it. We have that enabled. But in order for it to work, we need to go to project settings and add a fingerprint here. So how do you find a fingerprint? 
click on this, see this page, come to this website. It says for Windows, you just copy paste this into your command prompt. And it doesn't work. I'm like, okay. So I did some digging and I need to make sure you go to your Java folder. So my Java folder is in program files 86, Java, and then the JDK, all done. And then yeah, the JDK, and then the bin folder. And then in here, you can paste that line. So this is split up between two lines, so you want it all in one line. And you can paste that in, and you should see your SHA-1 show up in there. Here you go. You copy this, and you can paste it in here. And then save. Now I need to re-download your Google services.json file. And let's re-add it back to here. This is going to be number 11. We're going to switch it back to the normal one. Delete that one. Move to recycle bin. And then rename this one to Google services.json. All right. So now we are all good to go and we can start implementing it. So start running it and then we'll go to our login form and I'm just going to paste the code I have for the button but you can, you can just look through it, it's pretty simple, nothing too complicated. But here's what it looks like, we're turning a widget of Google button and we have an outline button with splash color of gray. On pressed, it does nothing so far. We have a border and all the borders and just, you'll see when it launches up, it's pretty, pretty simple. So then we want to put that after the flat button, we'll put our Google button. All right, so here's what it looks like before we put the button, and then if we save it, we should see a, hopefully a Google button pop up here. And we might have to restart, oh, there. Oh, I forgot one thing. We have to add the asset to the assets in the powspec.yaml. All and assets slash Google logo dot PNG. PNG. I don't think this is going to work. We're going to have to restart the whole app. All right, it worked. So here's our Google button. Now unpressed, clearly does nothing. So we wanted to do something. First, let's implement the actual event or method we're going to use here. It's going to be very similar to login with email. So let's copy that. We're gonna do login with with Google. So for Google we don't need to pass anything. So we can remove all this stuff. And then we if we go to the Google sign in here, we can just copy pretty much what they have. So initialize Google's sign in with the scopes you want. Let's do that here. And then we need to also bring it in. For auth result, we're gonna want to do something a little bit different, but for now, let's, let's leave that. The next thing we're gonna need is to do the Google sign-in. Ah, I misclicked. So the Google sign-in returns a Google sign-in account. And we can say Google user. Then from that Google user, we can get his authentication information. 
So it's Google sign in authentication. You can name it Google Auth. And all we do is await Google user dot authentication. Now from this authentication we can get the credentials of the user. So we get auth credential. We can name it credential equals Google auth provider dot get credential. You need to add an ID token and access token. You get that from the Google auth dot ID token. And then the same thing here, Google auth dot access token. So there, now we got the credentials. So we're finally at this line. We want to instead of sign in with email, we want to sign in with credential. Here, we just pass the credential. And the rest is the same as before. So what, what did we do here? So first, this line pretty much signs you into your Google account and you can pass it in and do like whatever. But these next three lines create a Google account on Firebase for you. So let's go to Firebase. If we go to authentication, let's just delete this account for now. And let's go back here. Ah, we don't have this being run yet. All right, go to login form. So here, I decided the way I want to do this is let's have an enum here of called login type. There's only going to be two, one with email and then Google. Google. So for this one, we'll pass a required We'll do at required login type and type. So for this now, I got to make sure I do the right thing. So this is the email one. So for type, we'll do login login type dot email. Then email is this. Password is this, and context is this. I figured I should probably start doing this since it makes it a little easier. I feel like it's better formatting. So that was the email. Now let's copy the same function. And we can pass, uh, where's the login Google button? Here. Oh. So the Google button's there, and then for the function that we need, we can pass this stuff. We don't need the email or the context really, so we can pass login.google and the context. So what do we do here? Let's add a comma just to make it more readable. We have our current user and a return string. So we're gonna have to define that return string outside and then we can set up a switch case statement. And our switch case is gonna be changed by type. So let's say case login type dot email. That'll be here. And copy login type dot Google will be here. Then we'll just take this, copy to the email, say return string equals that and then over here return string equals await underscore current user dot login with Google you don't need to pass anything and hopefully this should work perfectly now so I'm already logged into my account here with my email. So when I sign in with Google, it should just do it automatically by itself. I have a little black screen for a second. Choose an account, create a bro mail. The emulator is a little slower than a real phone would be.
There we go. Works perfectly. Now, even if we restart the app, uh, I don't think you need to do that a second time. You should just click it and it should go directly to the home page without going through everything. Perfect. All right, so that's it for Google. That works. Now the next next video we're gonna make is about making the login information stay over app cycles. So you notice we refresh, it goes back to the main screen. You have to log in every time. We don't want to do that. That's that's annoying for an app. So next time we'll be doing that. But that's it for this video. This code will be on GitHub if you want to check it out. If you have any questions, comments, or anything, make sure you leave it in, in the comments below. Like, subscribe, and share if you like the video. And thanks for watching.